Howdy mates, good noon time, it has actually reached that time of the day. It's still Monday, October 2nd, 2023. Welcome to a new month. As many people would say that we are now finally beginning the Halloween season. <laughs> the time of where fall foliage will finally start to become a bit more present. Here we've got the Cutler Donahoe Bridge, which is actually one of the older cover covered bridges in Madison County, built in 1870. Man, these bridges. So you figure, yeah, this bridge is just over 153 years old. In other words, it's been around for a good minute. We're actually in the town of Winterset, Iowa, which is the county seat of Madison County. Of course, in my last short film, one of the well-known films of uh, Clint Eastwood and Meryl Streep, Bridges of Madison County, took place here. It was originally placed as a book, adapted into a film. But another feature about Winter set is, I'm sure many of you, you know, especially those of you who have been around a bit longer, a well known actor who went by the name of Duke, also known as John Wayne, was originally from Winter set as well. But he only spent a very short time of his life here. I mean, maybe for just a few years in his early life and then pretty much after that so he was born in 1907 so just a few years afterward that's when him and his family went out into California but yes not too far from here is the John Wayne birthplace museum so you have to figure you know Clint Eastwood played a major role in creating bridges of Madison County and it just so happened to be that another big fellow western film actor came from this area I don't think that was by coincidence because you figure Clint Eastwood had a history of also starring in western films but they never got along or they never worked together John Wayne had a much more, what you call, old-fashioned tale of Westerns. More of that heroic aspect. Whereas Clint Eastwood, he did a little more of that anti-hero. And they tended to be a bit more dark. But nearby, we've also got the Black Walnut. Also known as Juglans Negra. So, a general rule that I've learned recently when it comes to the National Park Service is when they make films, they try to make it accessible in terms of those who are deaf or even blind as well. <clears throat> so, something that the black walnut tree produces is the walnut itself that is covered by an outer husk highly resembles something like a tennis ball if you can visualize that in your mind so initially in its prior to it becoming ripe it's a very bright green but as it ripens and gets into the fall that's when it turns a little more yellow and brown and this outer husk if you break into it it has a particular oil, it has a particular uh, substance tannins oh here we go here's one these uh, tannins which have a very dark brown color to them they could stain your fingers and your clothes 
quite easily. And oftentimes, other trees will very seldomly reside beside a black walnut because they produce toxic chemicals, or I should say toxic natural substances that other competition doesn't really like that much. But if you look past the husk here, that's where you'll actually see the walnut itself, which is edible, by the way. You can eat walnut. Now, something to look for in terms of its foliage. It's known to be a pinately, pinately compound arrangement, which in essence means, here we go. So you have a single leaf right here in and of itself with the stem, but then it breaks up even more into what we call leaflets, where you can see that they are directly opposite of each other. And then you have one leaf that is directly at the tip. That's how you can distinguish black walnut. But in terms of those who can't, who wouldn't be able to see it, you know, visually speaking, try to imagine... I'm trying to think of an example. Try to imagine that you're looking at an antenna. You know those antenna towers where at the top it has like a has like a little spire and they directly alternate from one another. That's something to compare it to. You know, in terms of like relating to another object. But that's usually an arrangement that it follows. But then as you go to the bark itself kind of follows a, a ropey pattern. And it tends to follow kind of like an X pattern as well. That's how you can distinguish looking at a black walnut. But they are a favorite, especially among our wildlife because they do serve as a great source of protein and our fellow squirrels and chipmunks, they love them. So, all right, I figure this video is over eight minutes. This is a good point to wrap up. All right, take care, you guys. See ya.